Decoration. In the UK, there has been a large growth in the way people decorate their bodies. Some of the ways of decorating that have become much more popular are the use of makeup for all genders and piercings, but the largest of them all is one form of body decoration. Tattoos. Tattoos were introduced to Europe in the 1700s, but since then tattoos have pulled themselves into the spotlight with the help of the population and have even lent themselves to our television screens. This huge growth in the tattoo industry has mainly taken place over the last 10 to 15 years, but what is the cause of this? Well, over the duration of this video, we will try to gain a better understanding of the growth in the tattoo industry. This is Thicker Than Ink. To get my first view on how large tattoos were, I asked 100 members of the British public if they had a tattoo and found that 72% had tattoos, with 64% of those with tattoos being women and the remaining 36% being men. From the 28% of the 100 participants that didn't have tattoos, the split between the genders was 50-50. A lot of people are very carefree when it comes to getting a tattoo and will have them done without giving it a second thought. And sometimes, the reason for this can be simply to follow a crowd or follow a certain tattoo style. The biggest problem you got is fashion tattoos. Everybody follows trends. It was, it was Tribal with Dust Till Dawn when that come out. Mm -hmm. It was um, Robbie Williams with the Maori stuff. And then yeah. it was David Beckham with the clouds and the angels. And the Everyone is, you, follows if you, them. If you get something like a Chinese character put on, it could, yeah. it could actually be saying this way it to the toilet. I mean, I mean I'd turn it away. It I'll turn all that kind of stuff away. If you come to me, I want to know personally you. I want to know why you want the tattoo. These are the questions. I have like 10 questions that I'll ask first. When it comes to trends, forms of media like movies and even celebrities can start them very easily. And when those trends get going, people like to jump on them. Some styles that have been inspired, as mentioned, are George Clooney's character Seth Gecko in From Dust Till Dawn inspiring tribal tattoos, and retired footballer David Beckham inspiring the trend of cloud and heavily religious tattoos. Curious to hear the views of an actual tattoo artist, I proposed the question on what the current trend is to a few professional tattoo artists. That's a Quite a lot of um, dot work is really popular at the moment. Um, a lot of realistic um, portrait tattoos, um, animals and people. A lot of people are getting blacked out. Mm, I don't know, I don't think there's so much of a trend so much nowadays because tattoos are a lot more in the limelight, or in the spotlight, should I say, that people sort of, you know, they do a bit more research nowadays. They don't just grab the nearest one they see and think it's cool and go for it. People actually sort of take a bit of time to think about the tattoos now when they never didn't really used to the general population anyway. It's not only the style of certain tattoos that become trends, the profession itself has too. Being able to tattoo has become a wanted skill, so much so that you can very easily buy a tattoo kit online for the small price of just £50. I remember at school people would do sort of weird things with needles and biros, but actually to buy the kit and think that you're capable of doing mm. something like this, but you say it's very common. Oh yeah, well me and my husband actually bought a kit. Never mind the quality of the work, what about the sort of medical risks? Did it not cross your mind that you think, crikey, I'm putting something into my skin? Health is not something to risk. Do you know what I mean? I deal with these people every day. Mm. I see the... I've got a girl who's got no immune system left because she had an infected mm. tattoo. It's set in that bad. She's got no immune system. She's on tablets for the rest of her life. was that from a home tattoo kit? Yeah, that was from someone who bought a machine out the paper and started having a go. And that's the problem. You've got a, a big percentage of England now that haven't got the intelligence to know that this is wrong. Yeah. You're going on about artistic ability and stuff like that. If you are a great artist, you will get in a studio. There's only X amount of studios. There's over 10,000 studios in England I bet now. there's a lot more wannabe tattooists out there. Exactly, but they're not good at art. Not they exactly, can't draw. No, you... In the early 90s, there was 2,000 studios in England, and the only people who were getting in tattooing were dedicated artists. Now you've got all these TV shows glamorising it, and then you get idiots from all over England now Wanting to be a tattooist. What if you don't want to glamorized? work for somebody else, huh? though? So then you go and waste the time of the person so in the studio. So that's just like saying, I want to be a doctor, but I don't want to go work for someone else. I'm just going to well, start no, doctoring. Go... That is correct in the growth of the tattoo industry. According to the Experian, between 2004 and 2014, the amount of tattoo studios in the UK had risen by over 173% and is still growing. When a person gets a tattoo, it can be to follow a trend, but as history has shown, people also get tattoos for a personal meaning. A tat can have any personal meaning that a person wants it to have. 
Curious about this, I invited a group of people to find out their personal tattoo definition. This tattoo, which I got about two years ago, it says the greatest thing you will ever learn is to love yourself. Um, this tattoo means quite a lot to me because when I was a lot younger, I was quite insecure about um, the way I looked. It didn't really fit in. I wanted to be that cool kid, like, like that popular guy, the one that everyone knows, and, and I wasn't that person. But obviously as I grew up, I realised that, um, you know, you need to accept yourself um, in order to anyone, for anyone else to accept you as well, um, which is the reason why I got this tattoo. The reason why I've, I've had my um, sleeve is uh, it's a memorial army tattoo, which um, it means a lot to me because I've actually served in the British Army. I've sort of mixed it about. I've sort of had um, a memorial type thing to help me obviously remember the lads that we've lost in the Iraq war. Um, I've also had a, a part of it with um, Winston Churchill on because I believe he was the best British Prime Minister the country's had. I've also had an army theme just here and the army theme detail, it's an army hymn and it, it states they shall not grow old as they are left to grow old. They shall not weary them nor the years condemn and going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them. The tattoos that probably mean the most to me. Um, I've got a full set of wings on my back. Sometimes I need a reminder to myself to say, you know what, you are actually doing okay. Um, and I felt that a full set of angel wings really said that for me, to remind me on days when I think, oh, you know, things just really aren't going so well, that actually they are and everybody deserves to be reminded of that. And that's what those things do for me. And I get a lot of enjoyment personally out of them. I've got um, a Woody and Bo Peep matching like love hearts on my legs. Um, and that's say true love and they're really cute and I love Toy Story. So that's why I got it. So the tattoo I've got on my arm, it's uh, only the good die young. And it's for my mate who got run over by a bus when we were 15, 16. And it, mean, it means a lot to me because obviously that was his saying. He always said that. With the bus accident, he was at a party. And then we all got a phone call from one of my mates who he was with coming, saying, I've oh, just been hit by a bus. And we got there and it was just the bus obviously that hit him. And the, there was like loads of police, loads of people watching around everywhere. And then literally there was just loads of different people, all our friends coming from left, right and centre. Like everyone just come together. Ever since then, obviously now you just live life to the fullest. Like I live my life the best I can. And yeah, I got this just for him, really. Okay, so when I was younger, I always knew that I wanted to get tattoos. Um, I didn't know what of. I was a sea cadet, so I was obsessed with boats and stuff like that. And I decided I wanted to get a boat tattooed on my thigh. Uh, I also wanted to get a mermaid on my other thigh. I wanted them to be like a pair of nautical things. So, yeah, I got them both. So, the idea of this was I gave my artist a painting that I'd seen online and she drew it up as a tattoo. The whale was incomplete on the first sitting and after the second sitting, she didn't do anything else to the whale, but I liked how it looked. It stood out on the tattoo because the tattoo was black and grey and I, I liked that. I have a tattoo of my nan on my right arm with two roses and I got it because it it means a lot to me because I idolise my nan. So yeah. I have a stag um, with jewels, green jewels and the reason I got it is just because I like to decorate my body. If it's a temple you may as well decorate the walls. So this tattoo of the Lord's hands and it says only God can judge me. It represents to me that you can only be judged by God. Um, I had it for the simple fact in the past I'd done something bad and everyone was quick to judge me but being religious and all that I just thought no one can judge me apart from God. My tattoo is basically Pikachu and pizza, which um, when people ask me why I got it, I more or less say I'm sporadic, I'm like nuts, but the real reason I really got it, um, ever since I was around five years old, I had a, a slight issue, I've been in surgeries, spent a quarter of my life in hospital. Um, so 
when you're full of needles and you got tubes hanging out your back, you know, mainly I just used to watch Pokemon. Um, Pokemon was the one thing that could really draw me out of, you know, the, the hell I was experiencing. So, um, ended up getting Pikachu. The main thing that really pushed me was, um, I've, I've been in accidents, I've had a bunch of scars, and this was one scar I kind of wanted to put on myself. Um, yeah, that's more or less the gist of my tattoo. I even proposed this topic to the artists. Just mainly have things that I like, for whatever reason. Like, I've got a Dolly Parton tattoo, so I'm a big Dolly Parton fan. I have a tattoo on my arm there, that I got when my daughter was born. No, none of mine do. <laughs> they're, they're all aesthetic, to be honest. Absolutely every last one of them. I think the best reason you can ever have anything in your life is just because you want it. You don't need to have a reason. It doesn't have to be painted up and glorified. You don't have to Miami ink every tattoo that you get. If you want something, that's a good enough reason for me. Like many topics becoming more mainstream, television networks like Channel 4, MTV and Spike have all realised that making tattoo television shows is an easy way to pull in an audience. To get a better understanding, I asked 40 people if they had seen these types of shows, using Tattoo Fixers and Just Tattoo of Us as examples. As you can see, 85% of my participants said yes, with the remaining 15% saying no. But this doesn't state just how much these shows are liked. When asked on a scale of 1 to 5 on how much they enjoyed these shows, 1 being not at all and 5 being a lot, the responses were almost equally matched between a lot and not at all. These shows, more specifically Tattoo Fixers, have received a lot of criticism from the British tattoo industry in the past, so much so that a campaign called Fuck Tattoo Fixers has even been launched. What do you think of the Fuck Tattoo Fixers campaign <laughs> started, by the, uh, started by actual like, uh, British tattoo artists? I, I am 100% behind it, <laughs> to be honest with you. Absolutely. Um, like I said, I mean, reason being, they're representing our industry in, in a false way. I do not like it. Do not like it. You know, you, you read about all the, the lash, what's the word? Backlash. Backlash, yes, that's the one I'm looking for. Thank you, words are hard. Um, but yeah, you know, people that have got serious infections, you know, I mean, there was the guy on there that, that was going to have breast augmentation uh, to be a transsexual. And beforehand, that wasn't taken into account with the cover up that he was having. So by the time that guy goes to get his, uh, his breast augmentation, that tattoo is going to look ridiculous. You know, so, I mean, there are tattooists out there that are offering free cover-ups for anybody that's had work done on them at Tattoo Fixers. Yeah, I'm 100% behind it. They're, they're, they're clowns, yeah. making our industry look like idiots to people. And, and, you know, tattooists have worked incredibly hard for years to try and get rid of the stigma of, of what the average Joe thinks about tattooing. You know, about, you know, it's for sailors, it's for criminals, it's dirty, it's, the art is poor and all this kind of stuff, you know. And that's not the case. And we've slowly been chipping away at this preconception that if you have tattoos, you're a bad person. And then these guys come along just for entertainment's sake, undoing some of that work. You know, just really not acting like professionals, which is bad. So, fuck tattoo fixes. <laughs> To find out how believable these shows seem, I gave the public the statement that tattoo television shows aren't an accurate representation of the tattoo industry, to see on a scale of 1 to 5 if they agreed or disagreed with the statement. From the answers I got, I found out that most people were on the fence about whether or not they agreed with this statement, with the second and third biggest percentages leaning more towards the agreeing side. But even if most people aren't sure if this is the way the British tattoo industry works, it's fair to say that these shows have been a crucial influence in the rise of tattoos, especially among people under the age of 30. But what else inspires the younger generation other than forms of media? We're from Ink Master and we're uh, going to be talking about some celebrity tats. This is the purest example of you just don't care anymore. Celebrities. It's no secret that more celebrities like music artists and TV personalities are now heavily tattooed. But these are the kinds of people that 10 years ago you couldn't imagine getting a tattoo. Like pop stars. The music genre that is most identified with tattoos is typically rock, and then following close behind, rap. Yet pop stars of today tend to be more heavily tattooed than rock stars from 10 years ago. But why? The reason for this is the first word of this video. Decoration. 
I presented the statement that tattoos have become more of a fashion statement to a group of 40, and they chose on a scale of 1 to 5 how much they agreed or disagreed. 5 being I strongly agree, and 1 being I strongly disagree. As you can see, almost 50% strongly agreed with the statement, and nobody strongly disagreed. Knowing this really opened up on the point that tattoos are no longer things that are looked down upon. But is this now the way it will always stay? I think perhaps people might just sort of look at them and think, oh, what the hell did I have that for? There aren't that many people now that don't have tattoos. Yeah. And it is a fashion thing to a lot of people, and fashion does go out of style. Eventually people will look back and go, well, <laughs> some, some might not, some might, but yeah. I don't think there'll be a time when they're looked down upon again, to be honest with you. I don't think it will get back to that state, but I do think there's every chance it'll end up being illegal at some point. It got, it's, some things are going past sensible ideas to getting a little bit too over-controlling and overbearing with the tattoo industry, you know, and body modification more than tattooing, I suppose. But I think anything that causes any kind of breakage to the skin eventually will end up need to be done by you know, somebody with a surgeon's licence, for instance, you know. So they might make it illegal, but I don't think it will ever be fully frowned upon like it was before. No. Whether or not the stigma that once surrounded tattoos returns, the impact made by television, celebrities, and now most of the general public has been enough that even with the stigma, people really aren't going to care. People will decorate their bodies with tattoos in the future because they enjoy the art, not just because of a trend. And even if people do turn away from it, there are new people turning the legal age to get a tattoo every day. This has been Stuart Crank, presenting you the change in tattoos. Good night. Good night.